<clears throat> I don't want my sound editors to spend the next two weeks just constantly fixing their edit sessions. I want them to get on with making sequences sound good. So we're not, we don't, don't give me anything until the end of the month, two weeks before we go into the theatre. I'll have, I'll miss the next four cuts. Just don't give them to me. I want everybody to get on and get the film sounding right. Then give me a cut. Then we'll spend a week conforming and fixing. And then maybe give me a cut before the final mix. So because we're pre-mixing in the box, we're pre-mixing everything in the Pro Tools, you can take your session to your cutting room, to another dubbing stage, to your main dubbing stage, to anywhere you like, in any country, on any planet, you can take your mix and it'll be the same mix as you have done in the first place, because it's, it's all in the box, as they say. It's all in the Pro Tools. So they can conform it. You can conform it, go into your room, or go into a small theatre, play it, and go, yeah, it's fine, the reverbs are fine, everything's fine. Great, okay, we'll carry on mixing that. So they, what used to happen, is that you'd conform the tracks, say if we, if we were mixing into stems, so we'd mix down the spot effects to seven one stem, which is what we've got up here. These are the stems for this purpose. These are the stems that I made. There's a dialogue stem, music stem, backgrounds, foley, and effects. And I made an effects A and B just to be able to get into the session, two sessions that we have in this room. And those, you would go back to the dubbing stage, having cut them with the edit tracks available to fix them, but you'd have to fix them on the mixing stage because all the things that were done on the mixing desk, the reverbs, the compression, the level adjusts, are all on the mixing desk. So if it's a DFC, for example, a Neve desk, then the mix assistant has to go to the DFC, he has to put in all the numbers, and the, the, the pro, he then has to conform all the automation on the mixing desk. So there'll be holes where our holes are, where the cuts have been made. There's a hole in the, in the stem, maybe it's a three second extension. And there'll be also a hole in the automation on the mixing desk. So the mixer then has to sit there and go through and, and remix that section that's new, that we've added extra effects to make it work. He then has to remix that and make sure that his automation. So, it's such a long-winded process to do it with stems, which is why we try and avoid it and we try and keep everything now in the box. The computers are now strong enough to deal with that much information and it gives us a chance to say, well, look, they're, they're cranked on the stage, they're working 15 hours a day, final mixing. We'll take the, print, the conformed tracks up to another stage, smaller stage, and we'll just run them and make sure everything is doing where it, doing what it should be doing, going where it should be going, that the automation is correct. And it's very laborious and very technical, but it does give you an opportunity to be able to do it while the mix is still happening. So, the, so a three-week final mix for a film this big is, would have taken seven weeks four or five years ago. Because, and actually, in honesty, there are mixes in America who still only work with stems. They still insist on working so that their work on, is on the desk. And, and rightly or wrongly, they feel that if you do a lot of that work in the box, in a cutting room, that's their mixing that you're doing for them because they're in charge of what happens on the, on the console, on the board, as we call it. Um, and so, in America, if you were to mix this film in America, they would have had seven weeks to do the final mix because of all the changes and all the things that had to be addressed and fixed. Um, but we, we work differently in the UK and I'm sure it's probably more the same here. We, and our, our process is different because we, we don't get paid as much and we don't actually, it's because we don't have a union. In America, they have a union who protects everybody and insists that you do it this way and that's that. And so, as a result, a lot of films come, it's not just the reason why, but a lot of films can afford to come to the UK because they know that they can get the job done without the union. Same here, they do the same. same. Yeah. 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 They get the incentives. Plus they get the tax break Rush. and the money. Yeah, they do. They get lots of money off. Yeah. So, it's good for us. It's great for us. Three weeks in three weeks or two weeks? Three weeks for final mix. 
So the effects have got a premix for three weeks. Um, the dialogues have a premix for two weeks, and then and then we we have a final mix for three. In this on this occasion, very often there'll be maybe two or three preview screenings to an audience in America or here to gauge whether the film's working and where it's not working, and that means that we'll have. Um, a three-day or four-day tent mix. So we'll take all our sessions into a theatre and we'll mix for three days the whole film. And then they'll go and watch it and they'll make notes and things will change or not, depending. Um, but the way that we work now, and because we work in this fashion, that session is the same session that goes to the tent. And then they mix with that and they create the tent mix. And in, in an ideal world, this you then carry on when you finish the tent mix, you continue with the same session for the next tent mix, and it just keeps changing, tweaking, improving. There are some times when you actually don't want to go use that tent again. You do the tent and you know that you did things that you wouldn't have done for the final mix. So you might you might there might be two versions of a scene that you have to do and you don't know which one is going to be the one that you end up working with. So you don't always have the luxury of being able to continue the process through all the stages, but, but you try to, that's the ambition, because it means by the time, if the director loved that we did a scene, uh, we did a 20 minute section for CinemaCon uh, in March, like six weeks after it started, and it included the car chase, the fight in the, um, subterranean chamber, uh, maybe the bike chase as well. Uh, and it was 20 minutes worth, and they showed it on a big screen, everyone went crazy. And we mixed it really hard, and it was really dynamic and aggressive and, and big. And um, everyone loved it. And they, the editor kept saying, you, That's going to be the mix we're going to have, isn't it? And you go, Yeah, 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 that's that, what we've given you there, we will have in our session, and that will be the way it will be all the way down the line. And when you get to the final mix, in context with everything else around it, with the film in its entire size, um, entire length, it's too big. These sections are too, too over the, too Tarantino as I call it, They're, you know. So we've got to bring them all down a bit, and make them a little bit more kind of in keeping with the rest of the film. But we have that luxury to do it. They, we know that they're really happy with that section, so we know we don't have to look at that until we get to the end of the process. The whole, like any production, the, the whole art of getting the, the best job done is by leaving things that work alone <laughs> and moving on. And it's like anything, if you've got a lot of time or a little amount of time, you could spend as long as you possibly wanted to on one sequence that they've already said, no, we like it, it's fine, don't touch it. And you might think, yeah, I know, I know they said that, but I just want to try this. I just want to add that. And the reality is, on any production, you leave it. You move on, and then you'll come back and have another look at it when you've had another chance to mix it with the director and everybody else. They may say, ah, it sounded great before, but it's not doing the same job now. So that's when you have another look at it. And that's the same thing with what we do. Um, we, we are, <clears throat> we're always deliberating over whether we delete tracks that we've muted. So we'll do a sequence and we'll end up muting it in the tent. And we come back and we say, mm, should we unmute them? Should we bin them? Should we get rid of them? No, 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 don't get rid of them. Because we may end up, they may, somebody might say, can we have those sounds that you had before? And invariably somebody will say that. So you have to gauge in the session that you've got, how much material do you hang on to, even if it's not being used, and how much do you just say, oh, let's get rid of it? It's, it you're constantly having to try and second guess the filmmakers. Um, but also you're, you're very aware that if you were given the opportunity, you would like to have those sounds back, and you'd like to try a different form. So you, you juggle. But, it, but by having it live, by having everything available, you, you have that luxury that you can do it easily. Um, for example, you know, this, this glass smash, we didn't know what it was going to look like until really close to the um, final mix, because it was a big visual effect. 
So we had loads and loads of effect. Oh, where's my, where's my <coughs> just get rid of servers. <coughs> yeah, so we didn't know what this glass was going to look like, so we had loads of tracks. Way, way more than you'd think you'd need. But we figured, well, let's just leave them until we know nearer the time what they want, what they actually what they're actually going to need. I mean, you need these. Uh, we also didn't know what folio we were going to bring to the show. So, I think we may have incorporated the spot effects from the folies into the hard effects so that we didn't have to go look for stuff going, okay, well, it's not in effects, where do you think it is? Oh, it might be very... No, we had, we had, I think we started with, with that, um, that, these elements. So, I think it was just the, just the, he said, I just wanted to really punch, I wanted it to be really thumpy. And then we ended up having to add these elements when the visuals came in. Uh, and there, and, and they, and then it's... It's really simple, it's just foley dust. Just glass, little bits of, little bits of grit onto glass. Rather than dropping glass, it was dropped onto glass. So it gives you that sense of... Um, you know, the way glass can, can reverberate gives you that sense. Um, so, um, what about the effects? The, which one? Hmm? Sorry. Yeah, what, um, in the scene, within the scene, when the glass is um, kind of exploding. On here? Yeah. Uh, what do we use? That one, you mean? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the impact. Oh, the impact. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, we used uh, some of our favourite sounds. Some, there's a thing we have called a sugar boom, which is, which is just a really nice low... Uh, this is what I love about <laughs> waveforms. With everything we were talking about earlier on with high pitch and low pitch, you can see it so clearly when you've got it in the Pro Tools. The long wave and the short wave. So we had the, the sugar boom, we had just a nice, and we had some more dust, which we weren't sure about at first. We weren't sure whether that was. So that was how we started it, with just a very light sound. And then when we saw the detail, because the first thing, it turned it into sand, it turned it into so sort of kind of like, it did literally evaporate into a kind of dust. <clears throat> but then when the final visuals came in, and it was this. Um, glass fracture little beads, we realised we needed to use different sounds that were more articulated. But the actual boom is very simple. It's, it's a high end, it's the sugar boom, and it's that. <laughs> Which, when you play them all individually, they sound awful. But when... And yeah, again, what we're doing is we're giving it a broad frequency. We've got some mid-range, some low-end, and then some very sharp, that very sharp mid-frequency stereo. 